All right, good evening, everybody. Today we're going to be doing lesson 7 4 use probability models. On our explain it, it says the chess club has eight members. A new captain will be chosen by randomly selecting the names of one of the members. Leia and Luke both want to be captains. Leia says the chance that she will be chosen as captain is one half because she is either chosen for captain or she is not. Luke says the chance is he that he is chosen is one out of eight. So let's construct an argument. Do you agree with Lay's statement? Use a mathematical argument to justify your answer. Well, one person might think that because Lay and Luke are the only people that want to be captains, that's one out of the two. It could also say that, well, either she'll win or she won't win, so that's one half. But the truth of the matter is that no, uh, Lay will either be chosen or not, while she'll be, Lay will either be chosen or not, she is one out of eight people. Remember, there are eight members. Since a name will randomly be selected, there is no preference as to who is chosen for the team captain. So even though Lay and Luke both want to be captains, one of the other members could be selected still. Do you agree with Luke's statement? Use a mathematical argument to justify your answer. Well, yes, since Luke is one out of eight people, he has the same chance as everyone else. Luke has one out of eight, or 12.5% chance of being chosen as the team captain. Now look for a relationship. How does the probability of Lay being chosen captain compare to the probability of Luke being chosen captain? Well, the probabilities are the same. Luke being chosen for captain and Lay being chosen for captain are two equally likely outcomes. Each member has one out of eight chances of being chosen. In our first example, it says, Mr. Campbell has a jar on his desk that contains 10 marbles. At the end of the class, each student draws a marble from the jar without looking. Notes its, uh, excuse me, without looking, notes its color, and then puts it back in the jar. Uh, if a student draws a red marble, the student gets a pass on the day's homework. How can the students determine the probability of drawing a red marble? What this simply means, I notice it says, uh, notes its color and then puts it back in the jar. So what they're saying is, after a student draws a marble out, he doesn't keep that marble in his hand while the next student draws another one out, because if he did, there'd be one less marble in here. Let's just say I drew first and I didn't get that red marble, I got a purple one. Well, now the next person has a one out of nine chance of winning. If he pulls a purple marble out, then the next person has a one out of eight chance. By putting the marble back in, every single time a person puts their hand in, they have one out of 10 chances of winning. This does develop a probability model based on theoretical probability. A probability model consists of the sample space and events within the sample space and their probabilities. A sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. When a marble is drawn, there are 10 possible outcomes. So that's our sample space. The sample space in this situation is one red marble, three green ones, and five purple, or uh, looks like one, two, three, four, five, six purple ones, okay? Uh, this is one way to represent the sample space, one red marble out of 10. List the three possible events and their probabilities. Well, uh, you could draw a red marble, that'd be one out of 10 chance of winning. You could draw a green marble, which would be three out of 10 chance of winning. And you could draw a purple marble, which would give you a six out of chance of winning. Uh, Mr. Campbell has a jar on his desk that contains, well, uh, this is the same scenario. Now they're saying uh, list the three possible events and their probabilities. We did that already. Now they're saying uh, the students in Mr. Campbell's class 
can use a probability model to determine that the probability of drawing a red marble is, and I'm sorry, I had to make a little correction there uh, uh, because it wasn't showing there at the bottom. The students in Mr. Campbell's class can use a probability model to determine that the probability of drawing the red marble is one out of 10. All right, let's move on. Uh, on our trident, it says Mr. Campbell decides that's too many students are getting a pass on the homework. He added 10 yellow marbles to the jar and tell whether uh, each part of the probability model does or does not change. Now, first of all, the sample space, does it change? Well, yes, of course it changes. We change from 10 to 20 because we added 10 more. Each event within the sample space, did it change or not? Well, no, it did not change. And the probability of each event change, well, that definitely does change. So the new probability of drawing a red marble is one out of 20, okay? Uh, instead of one out of 10. Remember, we said it did change. The probability of each event did change. Uh, let's see. How does a probability model help you predict how likely an event is to occur? Well, a probability model can be analyzed to determine the likelihood of each outcome of the sample space. In example number two, it says, Mr. Stillman has a marble jar, but students do not know the number of marbles or their colors. Each of 30 students draw a marble, not, uh, not its color, then put it back in the jar. Based on the results shown at the table, what can the students conclude about the probability of drawing a red marble? Well, remember that some of the probabilities, all the possible outcomes in the sample space of a probability model is equal to one. Why is it one? Because when we move that decimal over, that's 100%. Let's develop a probability model based on the experimental probability. Remember, the sample space includes one red marble, one blue marble, and a uh, green marble, right? Uh, they're saying list the three possible events and their experimental probabilities. Well, experimental probabilities, three out of uh, the 30 students drew a red one. 11 out of the 30 students drew a blue one. And 15 out of the 30 students drew a green one. Based on this experimental probability, Ms. Stillman's students can conclude that the probability of drawing a red marble is about 13 and one third percent. Why? Because four divided by 30 will give us about uh, 0.133 repeating, which will be uh, when we move that decimal point over 13.3 or 13.3 repeating, which is one third. In example three, it says, uh, Ms. Stillman tells her students that the jar contains 100 marbles. Based on the table of marbles colors after 60 draws, about how many marbles of each color are in the jar? This time we drew 60 times, and there were 100 marbles in the jar. Well, seven times out of 60, uh, it was a red marble. 20 times out of 60, it was a blue marble. One time out of 60, it was an orange marble, and 32 times out of 60, it was a green marble. The probability reasoning and, says use pro proportional reasoning and the probability model to estimate the number of marbles of each color. And it says here that uh, seven out of 60 is equal to uh, 11.6 repeating, which is about 12 marbles. Uh, 20 over 60 is about 33.3 uh, repeating, which is about 33 marbles. Remember, it has to be five or higher to round up. 
one out of 60 is only going to be about 1.6 repeating, which is uh, two orange marbles. And then uh, 32 out of 60 would be, uh, well, that would be about 53.3 repeating, which is about 53 marbles. And if you add this all together, you should get 100. I'm going to try to says to reduce the number of homework passes, which color of marble should Miss Stillman use uh, as the pass on the homework? Well, if she doesn't want a lot of people getting a pass on the homework, she's going to go with orange. After 60 trials, the orange marble has the smallest experimental probability of being selected. Remember the key concept, a probability model can help you evaluate a chance process and its outcome. You can develop the model using a theoretical or experimental probability. A probability model consists of the sample space of an action, event within the sample space, and the probability associated with each event. For rolling a number cube labeled from 1 through 6, the sample space would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The probability of rolling each number would be 1 out of 6. Do you understand? How can a model be used to find the probability of an event? Well, a probability model identifies the sample space, events within the sample space, and the probability of each event. The model can be analyzed to find the probability of any particular outcome in the sample space. Number two, how can you check the sample space of a probability model? Well, the sample space includes all the possible outcomes and the sum of all the probabilities of all outcomes should be equal to one. Remember, one equals 100%. Number three says, how does developing a probability model based on experimental probability help you evaluate a situation or make an estimate? Well, we can use the relative frequency of actual results to develop a probability model, allow you to see the experimental probabilities of each event and compare them or use them to make an estimate about an unknown part of the situation, such as numbers of marbles or colors of marbles in a jar. Number four says develop a probability model for the spinner shown. Well, it's got five spaces. So that means I would say there's a one out of five chance of binding on any number. And as you can see, the sample space is one, two, three, four, or five, and there's a one out of five chance of landing on any of those numbers. Number five says, Mr. Henry has a basket full of fruit. He does not know how many pieces of fruit are in the basket or the types of fruit. Each of the 20 students in his class selects one piece of fruit from the basket without looking notes the fruit type, and then puts it back in the basket. Based on the results shown in the table, what can the students conclude about the probability of selecting an apple? Well, it says here of the 20 students, five drew an apple. Uh, let's see. Remember, it said that uh, each of the students has selected one piece of fruit from it. So five selected an apple, two selected an orange, and 13 selected a pear. There must be some good pears. Based on the data, the experimental probability of selecting an apple is 25%, since five out of 20 of the students selected an apple. Where do they get 20 from? Well, remember, we have to add up all these to get the sum. That would be 13 plus two, that's 15, plus five would be 20. That's five out of 20. Five divided by 20 will be 0.25, which is 25% after we move our decimal over two spaces. Well, looks to me uh, like one number six, the probability model based on experimental probability for randomly selecting a marble from a bag, the probability of selecting a green one is 18 out of 40, Selecting a blue one is 14 out of 40, and selecting a white one is 8 out of 40. About how many marbles of each color are in the bag if there are 60 total marbles? Hmm. Well, that would be about 27 green marbles, 
21 blue marbles and 12 white marbles. Now, this might be confusing. Remember, it said about how many marbles of each color are in the bag if there are 60 total. It has 18 over 40, but remember, that doesn't mean that there were 40 inside there. That's just the ratio. So um, it says uh, if there were 60, this is how we'd figure that out for the people that are trying to figure it out at home. And I've got to go back to that and hope I can get the bottom part to give me, uh, let's see, nope, I'm having a little issue here. It's not letting me write it out. If I was to write it out, I would have to go ahead and remember that this is going to be based on, um, this is going to be based on, uh, remember, we have to put this equal to some number over 60 and then cross multiply it. And if we do, uh, we would see that we would have 18 times 60, then divided by 40. This would be 14 times 60 divided by 40. This would be 8 times 60 divided by 40. And that's how these numbers come about. Okay, we're done with the lesson, and it's time for you guys to try your homework. And I hope you do well. Remember to check the homework video so you'll, you can go ahead and view your work and check it. So uh, until next time, see you later.